Welcome to the Daily Business and Finance Show. Market Milestones and Movements, S&P 500 Nears Historic High, Tech Stocks Rally, Warner Brothers Discovery's Paramount Predicament, PayPal's Q4 Triumphs and Trials, Alibaba's Revenue Woes and Buyback Boost, Realty Income's Massive Pan-European Deal with Decathlon. Plus, NYCB looks to offload mortgage risk, NVIDIA rides the AI wave with Morgan Stanley Boost, and Disney delights with cost cuts and raised outlook. Stay tuned after this short ad break as we delve deeper into these headlines. On Wednesday, Wall Street concluded with an increase, primarily driven by technology stocks. The S&P 500 nearly touched the unprecedented 5,000 mark for the initial time. This significant rise can be attributed to robust quarterly outcomes from Fortinet that uplifted cybersecurity stocks and a spike in technology shares. Despite a decline in Amgen's post-earnings and apprehensions regarding the health of regional banks, 9 out of 11 S&P sectors wrapped up in green. Major winners encompassed Enphase Energy and Emerson Electric due to their encouraging earnings reports. David Faber from CNBC implies that Warner Brothers Discovery may not purchase Paramount Global, even though there were prior discussions about a merger between the two firms. This comes after a decrease of 5.5% in the stock value of Paramount. The fourth quarter results of Warner Brothers Discovery are expected to be revealed on February 23. PayPal experienced a 2.7% decrease in stock value after its earnings guidance for the year 2024 did not meet the expectations of Wall Street. Even though there was an increase in transactions per active account and stronger results for the fourth quarter, there was a decline in total active accounts. Alex Chris, the new chief executive officer of PayPal, is prioritizing growth and innovation while also handling escalating operating costs. Alibaba experienced a 4% decline in its stock following Q3 revenue that didn't meet certain predictions, even though there was a $25 billion augmentation in its share buyback scheme. The renowned Chinese tech firm disclosed a 2% reduction in non-GAAP earnings for each American depository share, yet observed a 5% rise in revenue. Eddie Wu, the CEO, underscored the organization's commitment to rekindling growth in their primary business areas, specifically e-commerce and cloud computing. Alibaba also announced various growths across its diverse sectors like cloud intelligence and international digital commerce. Realty Income has declared a sale leaseback agreement worth 527 million euros for 82 retail properties spread across Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. These properties are currently on lease to affiliates of Decathlon SE. New York Community Bancorp is currently in the process of seeking capital from a third party. This is to manage risk that's associated with a substantial residential mortgage portfolio at its Flagstar Bank unit. The options being considered include a synthetic risk transfer, which is backed by an approximate $5 billion in home loans. Additionally, they are considering selling around $1 billion worth of recreational vehicle and marine loans. This course of action comes in the wake of an unexpected loss, which was triggered by declining credit quality and a provision for credit loss amounting to $552 million. These concerns are primarily due to apprehensions over the office real estate market. Morgan Stanley has increased the price target for NVIDIA, a top-tier semiconductor firm, from $603 to $750. This adjustment is attributed to anticipated advancements in artificial intelligence and robust demand from cloud service providers. Even with extensive waiting lists for developers, analyst Joseph Moore forecasts that data center revenue will hit $88 billion by the year 2024. Walt Disney's shares experienced an 8% increase following the announcement of profits surpassing expectations, along with a promising forecast of a 20% rise in yearly profitability. Despite steady revenues amounting to $23.5 billion, measures to reduce costs resulted in a 27% surge in operating income, reaching $3.88 billion. There was a minor decrease in Disney Plus subscribers due to raised prices, however, the company still maintains nearly 150 million global subscribers. CEO Bob Iger has unveiled plans for a profitable streaming business and rejuvenated film studios as well as expansion in parks and experiences. 
And that's a wrap on the Daily Business and Finance Show. Stay informed, stay invested, and remember the best investment is in knowledge. Until next time, I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. Let's part ways for now until tomorrow arrives. This content is sourced from the Seeking Alpha website, so support our podcast by becoming a Seeking Alpha Premium subscriber. See the show notes page for links to sign up. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. This podcast provides information only and should not be construed as financial or business advice. Check out our other podcasts in our network at ClassicStudios.com.